was going to climb up here in my heels. <laughs> I am so honored to be here, ladies, tonight, um, just to share a little bit of portion of my life. Um, and it's my prayer tonight. I, I have a whole prayer team that I'm praying that, that God would just touch you and that you would hear this in the, in the right way. Um, okay, honestly, ladies, I'm terrified <laughs> to be here. I'm shaking. And I didn't tell Robin this when she asked me to speak, but God and I have always had a conversation, and I told him, there's one place I will never speak. I will never speak at my church. And you see how you probably shouldn't have that conversation with God. I have spoken to thousands of women, and I don't know why I'm terrified of my church, but I am. So bear with me tonight. I think it's because you're my people, and it's really hard to be raw and authentic in front of your family and your people. So um, pray me through tonight, okay? Um, I, I'm here, and I'm going to share you share just a little bit of my story. Um, it is my prayer tonight that you will find healing if you need it, that you'll find transformation if you desire it, and that you will find some hope. And if you need to borrow some of mine, it's here. I believe that God takes broken things and he makes them whole again. And I believe that that's his specialty. He did it for me, and I believe he heals. Um, he redeems the time that we've lost. He redeems things that we have lost and he heals broken people. So I'm going to begin with my story, and just a heads up, I'm going to take you down a dark path on the front side, and I'm going to get out of there really quick, because it's my favorite part of the story to talk about healing and hope. So are you ready? Yes. On June 12th, 2017, I found myself in a very dark place. I was severely overweight. Actually, for most of my married life, at 250 pounds, I was struggling with more than just my weight. I was battling depression. I was deeply entangled in food addiction, and I had a binge eating disorder. I had stroke-level blood pressure. I had prediabetes. I felt like I was trapped in a cycle that I couldn't break free from. The yo-yo dieting went on for most of my life. I struggled with anxiety and the fact that I couldn't be the mom that I needed to be for my kids. And that broke my heart. On the outside, see, we've only come to this church for three years, and so you don't know the dark side of Monica Boyer. On the outside, you would have no idea what I was wrestling with because I was a woman working in a man's world. I was a lobbyist. I could take any politician out by the knees. I changed state policies. I fought for things like marriage, sanctity of life, our liberty. And I, if I found a bad politician, I would work like a mad woman to replace them. So my dark hidden secrets were just that. They were hidden. I remember the day Congresswoman Jackie Walorski looked at me in the eyes and after a crushing media interview and said to me, Monica, never cry in public. You can do that at home. I never want to see weakness in you again. And from that day on, I didn't cry. My illness grew worse and worse. I remember sitting outside the college campus that I worked at scared because I was starting to lose my sight. I knew the things that I was choosing to eat were literally killing my body. Um, my, um, the day it all came to a head, I was sitting with my grown son. I didn't introduce my family. I have um, four children. I have Sarah is my youngest, and I have three boys, and I just had a grandson. Um, but I was sitting with our adult son, and he was like, Mom, let's go to Cedar Point. Now, what mom would have loved to hang out with her their kids, what a, you know, what adult, you know, it's just, it, it was just like, wow, that was, that was amazing. And I looked at him and I lied to him and I said, sorry, we can't afford it. Now, technically, if you saw the ticket prices at Cedar Point, I didn't really lie. However, I was too big for the roller coasters. And 
and that is the day my life changed. My world froze that day because I knew I had to change, but I had tried everything. My doctor said if I didn't change, I would end up in the hospital with a stroke, but that was not enough to change me. My son's words froze me. So this day was dark and it felt hopeless, but this was the day, June 12th, 2017, that my life changed forever. I began my weight loss journey, and I'm not gonna bore you tonight with all of the details on how I did it. I'd be happy to tell you that's boring. But in the midst of that change, I found hope. But through this healing, I realized very quickly that this journey was not about losing weight. It was about restoring my body, my mind, and my spirit that were desperately broken. It was about finding a new identity and a new purpose. It was about finding my relationship with Christ again and depending on him for every breath that I took. Now, I had known Christ as my Savior since I was saved at the age of three. But all of the sickness and the depression had kept me from sitting at his feet and receiving the healing that I so desperately needed. My weight loss journey was not easy. It was filled with ups and downs, but it was also filled of growth and healing. And I know you're wondering how I lost the weight. I will tell you. I embraced the ketogenic lifestyle, took out the sugar, took out the carbs, and changed my relationship with food, my addiction to food. I learned a new lifestyle that was free from sugar addiction and food addiction, and that, and I have lived that until this very day. I learned to, I have kept, uh, I've kept the weight off for seven years, and I've lived in freedom. As I shed the physical weight on my body, I also began to shed the spiritual weight that had been holding me down. You see, ladies, our bodies, minds, and spirits are connected, and when one is sick, they share each other's diseases. My outer trans transformation was exciting. Do not ask me how much money I have spent on clothes. This is very bad for me <laughs> because the whole world opened up to me. But the real victory was that I started to feel joy again. I remember that this time during my, the, the transformation of my mind, I had only lost about 30 pounds. I remember the day that my depression lifted. I remember seeing sun for the first time in about 20 years. I started to smile. I started to become the mom that I had always wanted to be, present, active, and full of life. Well, let me take that back. I didn't get the time that I had wasted with my kids. I'll never get that back. But I believe God redeems. And he's now blessed me with a brand new grandbaby. And let me tell you, this guy will be chasing me. <laughs> he will have a hard time catching me. This is what I want you to hear in my story today. The healing that I experienced went beyond the physical. Sure, I did a lot of hard work. I found freedom from my food addiction. And I am free from the binge eating disorder. With each passing day, I felt more connected to my body and more in tune with my spirit. And I learned to listen to my body. I learned how to slow down. And I learned how to find balance. Through this piece, I learned more about Jesus in my entire 41 years I've walked this earth. My faith was my anchor. As a food addict, there were times that my body and my mind screamed for my old way of living. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That became my default button. You see, I had grown very bitter. Through my days in politics, I had grown very bitter, and this impacted my relationship with Christ. Why did he make me this way? Why could I not get what others seemed to find so easy? What was wrong with me? Yet his love and his mercy carried me through the toughest times. The temptation to hide in my closet eating, the temptation for just one more bite, the temptation to relapse. Every single day, I felt his presence guiding me through my journey. My motto was, just 
for today. I will make it just for today. I can do all things. It was his healing power that transformed me from the inside out. Today, I stand up here not just as someone who lost 120 pounds. Anybody can do that. But as someone who has found healing and hope and a renewed body, a renewed mind, and a renewed spirit, and I'm living again. The funny thing is, he changed everything. He changed my marriage. He changed my health. He changed my career. And now I have the privilege of honor to work with women all across the United States through the same journey that God took me through. Ladies, our God is so gracious. I believe he redeems our time. I believe each person in this room has a job to do. A specific job that God has carved out for you and you alone. And I'm wondering, do you know what that is? Do you know what he's called you to do? You may be like me and facing a physical place that I was unable to accomplish because of my health. I couldn't do what he asked me to do because of my limitations. Or your confidence. You may be thinking, my confidence is the problem. I know. I was right there. The enemy loves it when we are physically incapable of doing what God has called us to do. As an unhealthy woman, I was powerless to do what God had called me to do. But God is patient. He is giving you a job to do. He's, give, he's going to give you the tools to do it. He's going to give you the courage to do it. And he's going to give you the desire and passion to do it. And it is my prayer tonight that if you know what God has called you to do, you can't sleep until you say yes. My journey has taught me that no matter what, no matter how deep the struggle, there is always hope. Always hope. Healing is possible. And with God's help, we can overcome anything that stands in the way. And don't do it by yourself. Look around you. Look at the sisters around you. You don't have to do this thing by yourself. And I want to leave you with this message. No matter where you are in your journey, don't give up. That's the worst thing we can do. Reach out for help. We were not created to do this alone. And let me tell you, the past three years, I have understood the meaning of those words because of this church family. We were not created as islands. Reach out for help. Lean on your faith. Lean on Jesus. You know, a, a lot of times people look at my before and after pictures, and you're welcome to go to my Facebook page and you can see it. I didn't want to didn't want to bring them with me. Um, but if you don't have faith, it is so hard to do this. And I want you to know that a lot of people think, well, weight loss is a physical thing. It is not. I needed Jesus every step of the way. He healed my body, my mind, and my spirit. I had grown so desperately far from him, and he filled me with his passion and his love. There were six months, when I had lost about 60 pounds, there were six months that I felt nothing. I felt no joy, I felt no, no anger. I felt I had zero feelings. And I asked God why. In fact, I asked my pastor at the time, I'm like, did I lose my salvation? But thankfully, we're here now, and I realized we don't lose our salvation. <laughs> so, um, so I was scared. I felt nothing. And there was one night that he filled me with the most incredible joy that I have ever had, and it has not left. Don't do this thing without Jesus. Reach out for help. God cares about the little things. You are stronger than you know. You are more powerful than you know. And with God's grace, you can find your way to a healthy, fulfilled life, living in the direct center of his will. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.